You can now buy an 8K TV and watch all of your content in amazing never seen before detail. But can you? Really? Well, how can my 1080p content look better on an 8K or even a 4K display? Hey guys, it's Subzi here and what exactly does it mean to upscale content? Well, upscaling is a process of converting a video input stream to match the display's native resolution. Now this is usually done with a dedicated chip inside the display or a separate external media box. Upscaling has been a thing for a very long time but it really became a thing when digital TVs took off. Now here are some common TV resolutions to think about. There's HD which is 720p at 1280x720, there's Full HD which is 1080p, 1920x1080, there's 4K or UHD which on TVs is 38 40 by 2160 and now there's also 8K which is 7620 by 4390. Now let's get into resizing and scaling an image. Now we're going to start with just a single image. If we take a simple 500 pixel by 500 pixel image and we want to fit it to a canvas of 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels, we will need to scale the image up. Now without any dedicated processing done to the image, it will just resize the image to fit a larger canvas to provide a larger pixelated image. Now this will be done normally by mapping 1 pixel to 4 pixels in this scenario because 500 pixels fits into 1000 by 1000 four times. Now, most processing would perform some sort of interpolation algorithm to improve the quality of the upscale. Now, what these algorithms try to do is they try to calculate the missing pixels what they should be to render a larger image which resembles the original image. Now, the algorithms themselves, they vary quite widely and they produce very different results depending on what techniques they use. Now, some introduce blocking or pixelation into the image, giving a very jagged look to the edges of the object inside of the image. Now, some try to reduce these jagged edges by providing a soft filter effect effect now these images can seem blurry and have reduced sharpness and others will try to over sharpen and these may produce halo artifacts around the edges of objects. Now smarter algorithms have been introduced which attempt to find a good balance between a pixelated image, a blurry image and an over sharpened image with halo artifacts. Now the downside is no matter how good the algorithm is, at least one of the three areas will take a hit. Either you'll see enlarged pixels on an image or the image is going to be blurry or the edges on the image will have halo effects. But more recently AI has got involved in an attempt to provide provide better quality upscaling. Now, the way this works is the AI gets fed a large set of reference images, each with varying resolutions. For example, it may be given an image of a tree multiple times at 1080p and 4K. It will then upscale the lower resolution 1080p images and compute the best algorithm to match the 4K dataset. It will then upscale the lower resolution images of 1080p and compute the best algorithms to match the 4K content that it was given. Now, doing this with a large dataset of potentially hundreds of thousands of images, it quickly learns which algorithms work best in which scenarios. For now, let's consider a 4K TV showing a native 4K image compared to an upscale 1080p image. But well, before we move on, in case you don't know, 4K contains four times the pixels of 1080p. It contains two times the horizontal pixels and two times the vertical pixels. An upscale 1080p image would be rendered and displayed on the entire 4K TV's display using interpolation. Now, depending on the TV, this may be a direct scale or it could be a detailed upscale using the aforementioned AI technology. Over the years, this has improved dramatically, but it still isn't perfect. Now, on the other hand, we have native 4K content, and this is produced by a 4K compatible camera, and the TV itself receives it as a 4K input stream. Now, this is displayed with a pixel ratio of 1 to 1 on the 4K TV, and because there's no computation required to fit the content to the display, the image is naturally sharp and detailed. At present, 4K is the industry standard and it could be for a while, but that hasn't stopped further consumer development. Now, 8K TVs have been showcased for years, with Sharp showcasing a panel in CES in 2012, but they are now being sold to consumers as well. LG has released the first ever 8K OLED TV, the LG Signature Z8, and that has a diagonal screen size of 88 inches, but it has a premium of 30,000 US dollars. Now, Samsung also have their QLED 8K TVs, which are dramatically cheaper at 5,000 US dollars only, but that's still a massive price jump from 4K to 8K. But these early 8K TVs are for early adopters and they should be treated as such. Now over the coming years we'll see more and more 8K TVs, most likely in larger display sizes because 8K doesn't really make sense for anything below 55 inches. Now at that display size, considering the typical viewing distance from a TV, a user would not really be able to tell the difference in the different display densities between 4K and 8K. 
Now, another major reason why 8K TVs should not be at the top of your shopping list is because there's not really a lot of 8K content out there. Netflix has no immediate plans to support 8K and most other streaming services don't either yet. Now, YouTube is one of the select few that currently do and even on there, the 8K content is primarily limited to short showcase videos just for feature videos and to showcase what 8K can do. Now, having said that, the 2020 Tokyo Olympics are to be shot in 8K and likely to be streamed on some services in full 8K resolution. But then again, this is a special scenario and it will still not demonstrate the full use case of an 8K TV. So, in 2019, what should you buy? Well, it all depends on a range of factors, mainly your budget. 4K TV prices have dropped dramatically and they can now be bought at only a few hundred dollars from even large brands like LG. Now some of these also come with support for HDR, now that would provide a higher dynamic range and a wider colour gamut still at a relatively low price point. Now if you have more money to spend on a TV, you may want to purchase one with native support for Dolby Vision, which is a licensed format of HDR content and typically provides higher quality content than HDR10. And you may want to look into different panel options too. Now the best contrast, the deepest blacks and the popping colours, they're given by TVs with an OLED panel and once you experience an OLED panel, you don't really want to go back to a non-OLED TV. But what do you guys think? Is there something else that should be considered when choosing the TV that's right for you? Or do you have an argument for why 8K should be considered at this time? Well, let me know in the comments below, but until next time, it's been Subs here, ciao!